Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Foundation in the shade F1. I have been testing this out for a couple of weeks now, so if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the foundation, then keep on watching. And if you want to see any more fair skin foundation reviews, then I will list my playlist down below. Starting off with some details, this is a full coverage, lightweight, demi-matte foundation, and it comes in 24 shades from fair to deep with varying undertones. I'm pretty sure I heard that they are going to be expanding that shade range as well, so that's good to know. It comes with 23 mils of product in the bottle, which is a little less than your standard foundation. It's packaged in a nice glass bottle and has a large doe foot applicator. You can pick this one up from the Makeup Revolution website. It retails for 15 Australian dollars. For reference, my skin type is normal combination. I do get a little bit dry around any breakouts, but I also get a little oily through my T-zone. My undertone is also neutral to cool. So as I mentioned, it does come with this very large doe foot applicator. To be honest, it's not my favorite way to apply foundation, especially for someone like me who does get breakouts. I don't really wanna be wiping this over my breakouts and dipping it back in the bottle. I just prefer a pump on a foundation because it's kind of easier to remember how much you use to get the coverage that you like. Whereas with this kind of applicator, you're just kind of swiping it on, taking a guess. It's not a big deal and it's not going to stop me from using the foundation, but I just prefer a pump. I don't know why every foundation just doesn't come with a pump. As I mentioned, I have the shade F1, which is one of the lightest shades in the range. It's described for fair skin tones with a neutral undertone. The shade is a tad dark for me, but the undertone is really nice. So all I do is add in a few whitening drops to lighten it up. I don't find that it oxidizes either. So if you are similar to my shade and undertone, then make sure you've just got some whitening drops handy because you may need them. If you watch the Taylor, this shade actually matches her perfectly, whereas I'm just a little bit lighter than her. So if you have her skin tone, then this will work well for you. For application, I like to use a kabuki brush to blend it out. This is my favorite way to apply my foundation as I find I get that nice full coverage. And then I like to go over the top lightly with a damp beauty blender just to get that nice flawless finish. This foundation actually really surprised me with the great coverage that it gives. It's not an absolute total coverage foundation, but it does give high coverage and it is buildable. So if I need a little bit extra in certain areas, like if I've got breakouts on my chin or my cheeks, I can go in and apply another layer and it's not going to get cakey or build up and feel really heavy on the skin. The finish of this foundation is also really nice. As I said, it's demi matte and that is a favorite of mine. I want my foundation to stay in place, but I don't want it to look so matte and drying that I look lifeless and powdery, you know? The longevity of this foundation is good, but it's not anything spectacular. I would say I get a normal seven to max eight hours wear from this foundation before it starts to break up. I found around that time mark, my chin is where it looked the worst. It was like it had separated and started to crack almost. The rest of my face looked fine, including my T-zone where I usually get a little bit oily. That was looking great. My pimples were looking fine as well. There were no dry patches and it wasn't clinging to those. It was just the chin where it looked absolutely terrible. And it happened every time I wore the foundation as well. I did try out some different primers to see if that would help, but it really didn't make a difference. It just doesn't want to wear on my chin normally. Overall, I agree with the majority of the claims of this foundation. It's lightweight, it has a buildable full coverage, it's demi-matte and it doesn't settle into any fine lines or cling to dry patches. It does settle into my bigger lines on my forehead, but if you've watched any of my other foundation reviews, you would know that is quite normal for me, but it doesn't settle into any other really fine lines on my face. So like around my eyes or my smile lines, things like that. The only claim I had to disagree on was the longevity. But getting eight hours of wear is a decent time for a comfortable everyday foundation for me. If you have any other questions about this foundation, then leave me a comment down below. But for now, I'm going to get into showing you some swatches of this foundation compared to some others in my collection. And then I will show you a demo. All right, so this here is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in the shade F1. 
This one here is the Makeup Revolution Fast Base Stick Foundation in the shade F1. Then we have the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in the shade 110 Porcelain. This one here is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable in the shade 10 Ivory Light. Here we have MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NW10. And this one is the Maybelline Superstay in the shade 110. And then I just wanted to swatch the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealers. So this one here is the shade C1 and this is the shade C0.5. So because I do have some blemishes on my chin at the moment, I am going to go in and cover them with my NARS Soft Matte Cream Concealer. And for this, I'm just using my Sigma P88 Precision Flat Angled Brush. This step isn't necessary because it is a full coverage foundation, but my blemishes do like to really show through, so I just like to put a little bit of extra coverage on top of them. So this amount of foundation has been four dips into the bottle. Next, I'm going to take a flat kabuki brush. This is the Sigma F80 and go ahead and blend this out. So this is what one layer of the foundation looks like. I will zoom in. <laughs> zoom in. I will zoom in and give you a closer look. For me, I would say this is medium. Once I put on another layer, it's a lot better, but right now I wouldn't finish with this. For the second layer, I'm also going to add in some lightning drops because as I mentioned earlier, the color is just a little bit too dark. And then in with my beauty blender just to lightly go over the top to get a nice flawless finish. So this is what it looks like with a second layer. As you can see, the coverage is much more full, which is what I prefer. So as you saw, it blends really easily and it doesn't dry down really fast. So you have time to work with the foundation. It's really buildable, which I love, and it doesn't feel heavy on the skin at all. It does dry down to that demi-matte finish. I still like to set it with powder though, so that it lasts longer throughout the day. All right, well, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching and this review helped you decide whether or not you're going to pick this foundation up. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I'm aiming to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I post lots of content related to fair skin, so if that's something you're interested in, then come join the fam. I will link this foundation down below and put any other information I think is necessary. I hope you all enjoyed watching today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.